Hey everyone, thank you very much for joining this webinar today. I'm Shweta and I'm part of uh, the marketing team at Whitehall. Uh, we also have Jimmy Buren here with us today. Hey Jimmy. Hello, thank you for joining me. Uh, we are very glad to have you here with us, Jimmy. So um, about uh, Jimmy Bearden, who is here with us today, he's been designing and developing e-commerce solution for uh, new online businesses. Uh, he's worked with entrepreneurs, even planners um, to establish their uh, online presence and to increase their site traffic. Uh, he's also managed a number of websites and uh, he has a lot of experience in branding, uh, SEO, advertising, and also social media marketing. So about today's webinar, um, the first part of the webinar is going to be Jimmy Bearden talking to us about uh, how you can uh, promote your mobile app and the last 15 minutes are reserved for Q&A. So uh, I'm now passing on the session over to you, Jimmy. Okay. Well, th I, I just want to thank everybody at Badger for having me here today. And thank you everyone for taking your time to uh, stop by and, and check out this event. Uh, one of the most important things that I'd like to say is how did, how did I actually get here to where I'm helping Vadro uh, promote their product? Um, several months ago, we started to design our own mobile application for our e-commerce brands and, and other e-commerce brands out there. And one of the problems that we were running into is the development time it took to make your own application in the small to medium-sized uh, business world was really a long time and that cycle took months and months and months of development and and this was not something that could easily be accommodated for small to medium-sized businesses in the enterprise world that's perfectly fine because they work in a different development cycle but in this case we wanted to be able to deploy apps fast for our customers and keep them updated and Vadro has created a product that does that um, we've tested it time and time again we're very happy with their team there um, we've leaned on them really hard they've done an excellent job they've always come through with our request they've uh, they've done a, a really really good job in making the process quick and easy for the small to medium-sized business owner um, I'm excited to be working with them they learned over time what I do uh, and how quickly I can work and help another client and they've seen that and they're comfortable in the type of work that we do on our end. So thank you Vedro team for inviting us and I hope that I can bring you know a lot of knowledge to the table today for your clients and help them move forward in growing their brand online. So um, a little bit about myself, I started developing e-commerce solutions about 10 years ago. Um, I went full-time about seven years ago uh, we've worked on a couple of multi-million dollar brands. We have built, uh, we've actually Shopify experts and partners for many, many years. We love the people at Shopify. Um, they've done a really good job at working with us and helping us solve tons of problems. I'm sure you guys have had problems in the past. Um, and, and that's really what this is about, always solving problems and helping people make more money. So in light of that, let's kind of uh, jump into what we're here for today. And, and that's actually how to get more traffic to your app to, to make sales on your app, because I think there's a, a, there's a multiple levels to this. And like I've told the team at Badro, if you guys want me to, to do like a second event in the future, I'm more than happy to do that because I think there's still gonna be a lot of questions at the end of, of this webinar. And hopefully we can answer as many of them as possible. Um, so if you would like to go ahead and jump into the next slide and we'll go ahead and talk about some of these tips that I have. So one of the most important things that I've learned uh, with any type of mobile application is first of all, you have to be able to be found, uh, be it your website, um, be it your mobile app. If you already have traffic going to your website, the first thing that you want to do is you want to allow that traffic to know that you have a mobile app. And while that sounds uh, such a simple task, we work with customers every day that don't have the first way of letting people know that they actually have an app. Um, an app is just as difficult to find as a website. And so if your customers are having a hard time finding you online, 
they're definitely going to have a hard time finding you on, uh, you know, your application. Um, I, I do believe we're somewhere close to 2 million apps now in the, in the app store and probably even more on Android. So that can be quite a task to even rank to be on there. Um, so we're going to talk about ASO, which is app store optimization. We're going to talk about that a lot. We've got a lot of input for that. Um, uh, as you can see right here, they're talking about the store descriptions and keyword optimization, as well as promotional uh, techniques. And you can see on several applications on the App Store on Google Play, it's very tough to get you know reviews on the App Store as well as Google Play. That, that's another tough subject that we're going to talk about. Um, one thing that we can kind of shine a lot of light on is the actual communities. Um, as Vadro always recommends to use uh, Facebook groups, we've seen a lot of uh, good growth on Discord uh, servers um, where we actually have a community manager and a Discord server um, where we're promoting our, our actual app and what we have for our clients on our server. So that's something that we can kind of control the community there. And he's pretty much on call on that all the time. Uh, Instagram is a great, a great place to uh, market, as well as your email marketing and SMS marketing. And one other thing I would like to share before the end of the event is kind of an SMS marketing uh, automation flow that you can use to get people to, to download your application. Um, and then at the end, we're going to have Q&A, and I'm sure there's tons of other topics you know, we can talk about inside here. So if you want to kind of jump to the next one, we'll, we'll start from there. So the first question I have for everybody is when I, when I look at their brand, I'm looking to see how are they promoting their app? Are they running any ads? Are they doing Google ads? Are they doing the uh, Apple App Store ads? Um, there's several other services out there. I'm sure people have seen those as well. Some that work well and some that don't. We can talk about a few that actually do work well. Um, also, it's... It's a little known fact that when you're promoting your app, it's, it's the same thing as actually promoting your business. So if you are trying to drive traffic to your app, you have to include links to your products in your blog to, the, to your app. You need to talk about your app and you can't just talk about your app in one place. That's, that's, uh, that's not enough. Um, talking about it in multiple places, letting, you know, obviously friends and family is a, is a key component to kind of share that around. But the biggest growth we had is, you know, primarily through Discord server and, and other servers of other people with other, you know, type of businesses. We're also in the cryptocurrency space and the NFT space. So there's a lot of little tricks that we use to kind of get people to try things and, and get user in input. Um, so it's, it's about building a community around your brand. Anytime you can do that and bring people in and you have good customers, that brand will continue to grow and grow. And it really doesn't matter what you sell. We've seen uh, steady growth and explosive growth from the strangest things, from the simplest of toys to um, the strangest things that you could possibly think of to sell online. I don't want to reveal too much about some of that, but... Um, actually being able to get the customer excited enough to download your app and to let them know about your sales via notification and whatnot. Um, and one of these other unique features that I believe the team at Badro can talk about something where they shine, where they have the blank um, live video feed. So if you would like to uh, talk about your live video feature really quick, then after that, we can kind of jump into the actual promoting part of it. Once people understand you have that, they will actually want to download your app. So sometimes there's a process in making them want to download your app versus them thinking they have to download it. So if you want to go ahead and uh, go to the next screen and we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit. That's something I want to make a note of to make sure everyone knows how that works. So one of the one important thing about getting people to to migrate over to your app is if you have the proper integrations in place to allow the customer to join your app, very similar to getting them to sign up for your, um, 
for your actual website, like becoming like a member of your website. We can also do that with the application. That way, if the customer wants to create like a wish list, um, very similar to Amazon, um, they can go back and then they can place those orders or they can show other people what it is they would like to purchase. So if you see right here, and a lot of these statistics change radically all the time and they continue going up and up and up. So uh, kind of currently, if you see 48% of smartphones, smartphone users are relying on app stores for discovering new apps. So what we like to do is we like to drive traffic to the website to allow them to discover that we have an app. Plus, we like to run ads on getting people to download the app. And the features that we provide in the app will allow the customers to get very app-specific benefits. So by doing this, this will keep your customer engaged with your app. Um, sometimes on a website, depending on the website, users will stay engaged with it if you're constantly updating everything on the website. But in this case, we like to put specific things in the app that will make them stay engaged on the app because once it's there and they get used to using your app, they will continue to buy and order those things that they need and want. So, so this is probably the most important thing right here. Let's, let's talk about this a lot. <laughs> um, I've got a ton of notes here. So if you see me looking off to the side, um, this is kind of what I'm doing. So one thing I want to talk about, and I, and I see this a lot, is we have on a couple of different apps we've already launched on Badro, we've used some screenshots. And what I highly recommend is for you to take your graphic designer and actually use some really high quality graphics that's going to get the customer to want to download your app. You have to show them a reason why uh, and use it in a very specific design way. So an example of a, a good, um, optimized app store, you know, design would be looking at this particular example right here, where they're showing you that they're a B2B e-commerce platform. They're showing you that everything is convenient and easy to use. And once you enter into their, you know, place of business by using their app, everything just becomes a lot easier. Now you're engaged with that brand online on their app. The chances of them going back and just using your website are kind of few and far between once they're using your app. I know a lot of people that we've talked with, a lot of businesses we talk with, a lot of people live in apps now, and that's kind of like what we want to do. Um, if they find you online on your website, that's all great and wonderful, but getting them here to the, an actual, the app is, is the key component. Um, so, and now that you kind of see that we need to make sure that your images are optimized. One other, you know, high converting factor is that first panel on your app description in the app store. If you want to do a video, um, that's something that actually helps raise your conversion a lot. Uh, there's a couple of other tricks that we see uh, that is working really well with customers. And that's in the actual title of your app by using, you know, specific keywords that have something to do with your app. We don't recommend any type of keyword stuffing uh, in your description or in your title. Just kind of use natural language, but make sure you actually use the name of your app and what it is you're selling. And that will help with time as people are searching and your app continues to pull up with time, that will help you rank a lot better. Um, something that we highly advise against is uh, not to duplicate any type of keywords on there. Don't do that. That's not, um, not going to help you whatsoever. Uh, it has a lot to do with, let's see here. Let me pull up some of these other notes that I had here for everyone. Um, one thing that you can do is you can eliminate spaces in your keyword list. And they do not, absolutely don't stuff the subtitle uh, of your app store. Uh, optimization, don't do that in your description or in your title as well. Um, one, one other thing that is highly recommended that we've seen uh, good information from is um, as far as like using misspelled keywords, I know that's a tactic when it comes to 
uh, ad search optimization, you know, on the web, this can actually have, you know, help you as well as, for, you know, for your application. That's something that a lot of people that we don't actually see uh, doing. That's something that's actually got them a lot more downloads. And there's a lot of other new techniques and tricks, you know, in regards to product pages and stuff like that for app store optimization. But I believe that's something that we can talk about at a later time. Right now, let's really kind of focus on, you know, the easy parts of it. And then we can kind of go into the more advanced parts of it. So here's a, here's a great example right here. Um, some things I like about this example and some things I don't, but let's go ahead and focus on the good things. So if you see uh, in this particular application, you know, they've got a really nice icon. They've got a very interesting name. Um, the subtitle, you know, this is just typically, you know, who it is and who's built the app. Um, you see the app screenshots. Now, what we'd like to focus on the app screenshots is when you go to an app like this and you look at it, is this something that you would uh, download? Is this catching your eye? So what we would highly advise this client to do right here would be to use a video in the first part of the screenshot section. And in subsequent uh, sections right there, we would like to use um, something that kind of gets to the bullet points of what is this app going to do for them and then show kind of like the app screenshot on the phone inside that, that image, um, something that's bright, something colorful to kind of get their attention. And then if you see that, you know, the about this uh, description, it's not very, uh, there's not enough information here. The more information you can give it, the better. Just remember, try to make everything uh, kind of like a natural, you know, type of language. Do not, uh, there's, there's different things that you can use to kind of gauge this, and it's called the flesh, uh, you know, rating score. Try to make it something to where everyone would understand it. Don't make it too technical, but something that key elements that people are going to read and see and understand. Something that we've chosen that works really well with people is people like to see how uh, quickly are they going to get their product, um, you know, all the different types of products that they can order. Uh, what type of features that they can do within this app. Uh, does this actual, you know, is this app, this company that we're dealing with, do they have good reviews and whatnot? And as you can see down here, this company, they've already been building up their ratings and reviews on their application. So that's great. Um, I, I'd like to say that most uh, apps start getting more downloads once they start seeing, you know, a hundred to a thousand uh, ratings and reviews. Once that happens, um, I would feel comfortable with, you know, telling people to continue to spill more, you know, spend more money and promoting their app. So go ahead and let's move to the next one. All right. So if you would like to, if you would like to check out our website at uh, zenogramshop.com, you can see a multitude of ways of how we're actually promoting the app and getting people to download it. So, so right when you land there, there's an actual panel where it shows that we're on the Apple App Store as well as the Google Play Store. And it kind of shows that it works on the iPhone and the iPad. Um, and if you click that, it goes to a small download page to where you can download the app from the App Store or Google Play. Um, one other thing that we're doing is we're actually running ads to that app download page. It doesn't have to be anything complex. It doesn't have to be something that takes you a long time to design, just something that's simple and to the point where people can actually get to the app and download it. Um, we've also included a download link at the top that goes to the download page as well, so people can find that. Um, anytime you are running traffic, you're, you're kind of giving yourself multiple ways if you're running a search ad for your application on Google as well as for your actual website. So take advantage of that uh, both ways. That's uh, something we highly recommend people to do. And once you do that, you will start seeing, you know, growth. I mean, we're seeing 200% growth on our end. So uh, that's something that I think everyone wants to see every week. And a really good example here, I, I would, I'm kind of glad that they chose this. The Simply Me Boutique, um, the ladies over there, they did a great job in getting people to engage in their Facebook group. 
So, and they have a lot of really nice looking clothing. This would be a brand that we would like to really work with right here. Um, down on the bottom of their application or the bottom of their website, they have two, uh, you know, app store icons, you know, for uh, the Apple app store, as well as the Google play store. And if you were to join the Facebook group, you would see, you know, how they're promoting that, you know, their sales and their products internally within their own community. Plus they're using that to leverage to get people to download their app. So uh, they do stay on top of sending out notifications. Probably one of the better groups I've seen out there. Uh, they do they do an excellent job. I mean, they really do as far as uh, getting people to come in and promoting the different things on sales. I've gotten notifications from them, you know, a couple times per day, especially toward the weekend. So that's something that I really like about the group over there that at uh, Simply Me Boutique and how they're actually promoting their brand and helping their customers. So what you'll see is after you start to get people in your group, especially in Facebook, you can retarget those people and you can find a lookalike audience to get more people that are very similar to your same customers because you don't really want to waste ad money and send that to ads to people that don't know you and don't know about your community. I mean, it's always good for people to be able to discover you, but it's also uh, better if you can get the right types of customers, you know, by finding the right type of targeted audience. So congrats to the people at Simply Me Boutique for doing a good job on that. Okay, so this is another example right here of what I was talking about earlier. Um, I remember discussing this in great detail to a couple of people. Uh, you can go ahead and move over to the next one where I can show them the actual amount of reviews and how many downloads. So just to kind of give you an example, some of these brands have been around for a while. And if you're concerned about the growth of your app, look at these particular brands. These are strong brands and they're constantly um, working on their business. If you see their amount of reviews they have, the reviews and ratings, you're, you can see how many downloads they have. You can see um, the, these are all great brands right here and they've done a really good job at constantly you know, growing their customer base. I'm not going to tell anybody here that none of this is easy. It is a lot of work, but you'll be rewarded, you know, in the end by all your hard work, by constantly, you know, getting more people, you know, to join your community and getting them to purchase more items. It's already hard enough to find uh, great customers today because of the competitive nature of this business. But uh, this is something that really kind of keeps it uh, close to, your business is when they download your app and you have them, you know, interacting with you within there. So great job to Nanomax, Simply Me Boutique and Ashley's and by Egress. So good job on your guys' behalf. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into, uh, again, as, as I said before, a lot of times if you have a, a Facebook page, a Facebook group, and depending on you know, where your community is online, always let people know within there, you know, about your application. Don't bombard them. Just genuinely let them know every couple of days, especially if you have new people coming around, because if that's how you're going to be promoting your items within your app, well, then they need to download the app to do it. And this is, you know, mo mo more specifically for e-commerce brands. Um, you got to be a little bit more diligent about it, unless it, if it's some type of special app, you know, like a music type of app or a game type of app. Those are, those are entirely different ways, you know, to manage those. But I would recommend on your Facebook page, because general, generally all online businesses have a Facebook page. Uh, if you have a Twitter or anything like that, make sure you are talking about your app and you can include it on the top of your Facebook page or in some of your posts on occasion. Um, I would probably say I, I agree with these people wholeheartedly on letting them know about it weekly or bi-weekly because the attention span online is, is pretty, it's pretty short. <laughs> um, even major things that happen, you know, usually seem to disappear in like a day or two. So keep that in the front of your mind when, whenever you're, whenever you go to want to say something, you may say, Oh, well, I've already talked about that this week, but 
maybe they didn't see it. So it's okay, you know, to go, go ahead and, you know, promote your own brand like that. And if the people don't like that type of self-promotion, well, then those are probably not your customers. So you want your customers to be like fans. You want those people to be able to do that. And they will, by nature, help you spread the word about your good business. So um, this is a great point to look at right here. And as far as like moving into like the Facebook group or anything like that, it really has a lot to do with how good your community manager is and how much they talk to them. People, um, uh, there's something to be said about that. I want to kind of bring that up. Make sure that whomever you hire for a community manager is actually a social type of person online. Uh, community managers, one really good guideline to look at um, would be the people that like to post a lot and the people that like to interact a lot online. Um, I've seen a lot of times where I've met some people that are are fairly introverted people that they, they've been put in the role of being the community manager and they don't really talk a whole lot within the community. So get somebody that's, um, you know, pretty much open and willing to talk and not be scared, you know, to get a point across, you know, kind of draw some guidelines for them. Don't let them, you know, talk about the things, you know, that we don't like to talk about online in your group. Just go ahead and get that out of the way in your initial contract but make sure that they are happy to promote your product and that's what they like to do and you're gonna to have to pay them well. <laughs> so that's one of the most key components. It's almost like your content creators, your content creators that are they're making videos for you online on TikTok and Snapchat and stuff. Make sure you compensate them well so they wanna come back, you know, give them some recurring revenue, you know, get them set up in, as an, you know, an affiliate, you know, to your system like, don't make them go through all that. Just pay them and take care of them. And they will continue to promote you and take care of you. So, okay, here, here is a good example of, uh, of a post that, and I can kind of share a little hack with you on this. This is something that we learned just recently. Um, if you have a really good designer, get them to design something that shows your app online. Uh, we've seen some really uh, great design work where people use a carousel on Instagram or Facebook, and they can show the different bullet points of like, why do you want to download uh, our app? Well, obviously, there's several different reasons why you would want to get them to download your app. But the customer has to want to download it because sometimes people, unlike me, I like to try a lot of apps. And maybe since you're in the technology space, you may like to try that. But there's other people that don't really like to do that because they don't like to learn how to use other things. So if you can teach them in a, a carousel type post, a very well-crafted post, you can show them that the application is just as easy to use in relation to the website. And now since it's on here, we don't have to worry about, you know, loading it up and going to Safari and typing it in every time. And you can see all the, you know, the latest things that we have, because as we update everything on the database on the Shopify side, it updates everything on our actual app online. And that transfer only takes, you know, a couple of minutes at best. And right here, they've done a really good job on letting them know uh, to download the app. They're giving them the actual, the website domain. They're showing them what the app looks like. Um, they're showing the proper logos. That's something else that I'd like to bring up. Uh, make sure that you use the, logos that Apple provides you and the, the logos that Google provides you because that's what they want you to provide. That's what they provide in their kits in order to advertise your app from their store. Don't try to design anything that's fancy that you don't have the right to design because they have very specific rule sets on that. So try your best to look for the correct marketing material. Um, that's something I can definitely um, if anyone wants to reach out to me, I have all that information where I can send the links to you. Uh, maybe we can go back and get the team at Vadro to put those links up somewhere where you can easily gather um, that marketing material that you need. A unique thing that Apple kind of added a while back was a way to create posts uh, on one of their you know, domains where you can change the color and they'll, it puts the icon uh, on the actual post. If you go to our Instagram account or our Facebook page for Zenogram Shop, 
you'll actually see what those posts look like. We did that last night to kind of show everybody. And that's a, that's a little known, you know, trick that people have not even found or seen yet. So um, good job on, you know, for these people on you know, what, what they've done to kind of go the extra mile on promoting their app. Now, when it comes to using Facebook groups, again, Facebook groups are one of those kind of things where you have to live in it. You have to be there all the time. You have to work it. It's a lot of, um, for the, for the squeamish, the ones that think that they don't want to, they don't have the time for that. Definitely hire a community manager for a Facebook group. Um, we don't have a Facebook group community manager yet. Our guy's going to be on discord because that's where he lives. So, um, for that, you know, we'll be looking for somebody in the future that'll be willing to do a Facebook, uh, group community for us. That's willing to grow it. Um, we have multiple brands that we work with and we try to get those customers to use a Facebook group or a discord server. Um, again, that's back and forth depends on what your personal preference is getting people within your Facebook group to join your kind of group as a, a brand ambassador by paying them 10 or 20% to spread the word about your product and by downloading the app. Um, there's times where we can get people to get their friends to download the app. And as they have more people that are downloading the app, they can make a commission as well. So um, don't worry in terms of that because when you're advertising, when you're going to acquire a consumer acquisition of a consumer can cost more than just paying that, you know, customer a small percentage for sending you a referral. Um, it depends on also your volume of how much you spend on ad spend. If you spend a lot, you can get that, you know, that return on ad spend can go down. But if you are spending borderline and you're not spending enough in your particular type of industry, Sometimes just giving the customer an actual um, commission, you know, for helping you sell works out in your favor. And we can talk about that in, you know, future off, you know, off this kind of off subject to this, but that helps keep those Facebook groups engaged and the Discord servers engaged. So you can go ahead and go to the other one. And I'll definitely, I want to come back to that because that's a, a huge topic right there. Okay. So. One thing that we really liked about the Vadro system is the, the app store types of incentives that you can use in combination with Shopify. So one thing that we do to, to drive downloads and to get people engaged in using the actual app is right now we're giving them an actual discount for downloading and purchasing on the app. So if we have anybody message us and they say, hey, is this the best price you can do? Or, um, you know, we get that a couple of times a week at best and we ask them what type of phone they have and we show them you know what we do and you know giving them a five to ten percent extra discount for downloading the app is actually beneficial to them and then once they see oh well they're going to get all these additional features by downloading the app and the ease of use then then they're going to want to stay in the app so that that's that's a good benefit right here and that's just something that needs to be turned on. So if you have an app through Vagero, um, I highly recommend to make sure you go in and look at those recommended features in your integrations and make sure that it's turned on. And if you have any questions about that, just reach out to the team at Vagero and they'll be more than you know, willing to help you. Um, if you have any questions for me, you know, feel free to reach out. And it's something very similar, you know, simple that we can show you how to set up as well. So a lot of the times, the simple things is what leads people to solving the more complex problems. And that's kind of what we're here for, to kind of make it easier for other people to adopt, uh, you know, moving over to an app. So, okay, Instagram deals and discounts. This really kind of uh, falls into everything else. If your brand uh, revolves around like Pinterest or Instagram or Facebook, it really depends on where your community and your, where your audience is at. Um, always let people know what's coming up, the sneak peeks. That's, that's a great thing, especially if you're in the apparel industry or if you have a brand new product that's coming out, just tell them. People want to know. They want to say, I can't remember 
how many times um, in different types of businesses I'm in, and I didn't hear about something until much later, and, and I would have definitely adopted it if they would have just told us about the feature. So don't be scared to talk about things on your roadmap. Don't be scared to use, you know, Instagram polls, um, you know, leverage all of that. Um, these are the kind of things that I think when it gets down to social media management, social media, uh, the managers that are, they're just good when they're creative and they, and they integrate these types of techniques into building engagement on their posts. Uh, sometimes I think we get stuck in the circle of, you know, we just need to get something out there. Well, sometimes it's about being crafty and getting those people to, to come into your business uh, via, if you have a, a local, like a location, if you have, you know, you just want to get them to the website to see a, a new blog post, or if you want to show them something, you know, new feature that you've added to the app that's going to help them instead of cost them more money. Talk about the app and the features you're adding, what you're doing for them, not necessarily selling them another widget per se. You know, it's about the customer, not about you. You're just the Basically, you have to do a good job of conveying what you do to the customer by getting them there. And if they want something from you, they're going to buy it. And if you do all these steps that we're talking about, they're going to download the app and they're going to buy. And I can't tell you how many years it took, um, you know, things that we developed to, to get people to just that circle of trust you got to have with the customers and the amount of time that it takes to develop those techniques and teach other people how to do those. It's, it's, a, it's a, good deal, a good deal of time. Um, as, as we've discussed before, the referral programs and, you know, giveaways, I would, I would highly recommend um, referral programs. I can't tell you how much. We, we, we had one particular brand that we worked with over the past year, um, and I believe by the end of the year, they had about 780 additional sales uh, in reference to our referral program that they use. And that particular referral program costs them about 50 bucks a month. So, you know, they do, there is an initial setup fee of something like that, but getting referral programs to work um, and make them work, you know, with your app and making it work with your website is something that's very important and works very well. So uh, don't forget that. That's, that's a, you know, a lot of insight right there that'll really help you out. So working with uh, influencers in the past, some we've seen great success, some we have not. Um, I really think it has to do with how well does that influencer align with your, your cadence or your actual brand. Um, like it has to be somebody that seems to fit in. Uh, they have to be the right type of energy. They have to be creative. Um, if you're doing clothing and apparel um, and you're in the female industry, that seems to be really, really strong. Um, females are really good content creators. Uh, something, some of the best ones we've ever dealt with was female content creators that actually worked. Um, a lot of the male content creators we've worked with work well for like gadgets and electronics and you know various things like that. Um, so it really depends on what your audience looks like. Um, sometimes you just have to continue to an analyze that and experiment. So there's really no secret hidden sauce to doing uh, influencer types of deals. Um, as far as like exchanging shout outs, that, that used to work really well back in the day. We haven't really had a whole lot of uh, input from that here lately. I think so many people have done that, you know, in the past. And it's a kind of, a, you know, kind of a idea that's kind of going away. But when it comes to local ads, I really do believe in this, especially if it's something if your app has something that helps your local business, as far as promoting your, you know, your store, definitely do that. Definitely get those people on the app. Definitely get your employees involved in it for all. Yeah, that's something that we see a lot. Um, we work with customers that that have apps and websites, and they don't even they don't even promote it uh, uh, by any means. You know, make sure you have, you know, on your receipt, uh, you know, from your point of sale that you have an app. Make sure you let them know you have a website. Um, continue to promote it verbally, socially, signage at your front door. You know, all, all these types of things truly work. Um, and I've, I've seen a handful of people doing that here around in my city, but it's something that we, we all need to do a better job of. So 
this right here. So let's let's talk about a few things that can make your life easier. I don't know, and, and hopefully we can get into this in the q and I'm not sure if uh, how many of you are actually talking about your app and your email campaigns or what actual uh, software you're using. We use uh, three different ones. Let's just, I want to talk about two of them really quick, Clavio and uh, Active Campaign. Both of those are great uh, email, you know, types of automation slash campaign softwares out there. Um, I would highly recommend, you know, probably once a week or especially when they're new customers and you know that they haven't engaged on your app. I would definitely recommend you to, you know, send an email out to let them know that you do have an app to get them on there. Now, while a lot of these people are saying, well, that's a very obvious thing to say, this is not an obvious thing people are doing because we check a lot of those workflows with those customers to see if they're doing that and we see it nowhere. So um, this is something that's like really high on the mark. Like even when we're just consulting with people, we ask them, uh, are you including it in your text messaging campaign? Are you including it in your email campaign? Are you telling people about it? We'll go to their, their social media uh, sites <laughs> and we'll notice that they don't, don't even talk about their app um, on, their, on their Facebook or their Instagram or anything like that. And then they wonder why they don't have any downloads. And a lot of the things that these customers, they just don't know because they don't know how much money Amazon spends on that. They have no idea how much money Facebook is spending uh, or, or, or any of these other companies are spending. And once you bring that up, um, like in some of our, our classes where we talk about ads on Facebook and Instagram and, you know, I mean, especially everyone's talking about TikTok right now, they have no idea how much these big brands are spending on these campaigns. And once they hear that, it makes them understand that they better do a great job of handling all the, the regular everyday type of work that needs to be done. And don't forget, this is not something you have to physically do every day, but like make sure that your campaigns are kept up to date because the automation will take care of a lot of this. So if you get them to subscribe, it's gonna send them an email and then they can engage with it from there. You know, then you can see are my campaigns working properly or not. But just, I guess the best thing I can say is stay on top of it. Um, again, this incentivize the download, this is great you know, get people, you know, tell everybody the next 50, you know, downloads we have or the next 100 downloads gets 10 to 15% off. If that's not enough to get somebody to come buy something from you, then you probably don't need them as a customer anyway, because that means they're not going to buy anything from you. They're only buying based off of price and not to engage with your business. So sometimes it's about what you have and what you have in stock and how well you can help the customer. Because one thing that we do what makes us different than everyone else is we're actually promoting our customers' products on our website and our app. So if you can go to market and develop a website like that and an app like that, and then you have the budget to advertise that, we're helping our customers. So some of our customers that sell our product, they sell their products on our website are our actual customers and they have their own websites too. So we're just giving them another vehicle to distribute their products and we're just sending the orders to them and they're fulfilling them. So we're kind of acting, acting as a, a marketplace for some of our consumers as well. So it, it, to us, we need to do a good job to help our customers. So yes, this is a, this is a really good trick right here. Um, I can't tell you, like when, when you communicate with somebody via email, there's a lot of you out there and y'all know who y'all are. <laughs> the ones that like to email everything and not talk on the phone. If you're going to do that and you're, you know, collaborating with someone, make sure you include all your pertinent information in your email signature so the people can actually find out what it is you do. So we don't have to go back and forth and talk, talk so much about it. And, you know, 47 micro email exchanges. Um, notice that they have their Facebook, the Twitter and their Instagram, and they have their, um, their Google Play link and their App Store link. And again, something I want to bring up, and I've touched about this a time or two, there's a couple of different marketing channels uh, with Apple and marketing channels with Google where you can go to those places and you can put your app and the name of your app in there, and it'll pull up all that information about your app, and it has copy to click links so you can share 
that link with other people out there to download it. Um, again, you can go on the app store and take, you know, 10 to 20 of your closest acquaintances and send your app to them and say, hey, please go to my app, take a look at it, tell me what you think, let me know if you have any issues, because your closest friends uh, are going to be the ones that tell you the, probably the truth. They're going to say, well, I didn't like this, or I didn't like that, or why didn't you do this, and and whenever you learn in this business that constructive criticism, you're just going to have to learn to deal with that because there's nothing you can ever do that's going to be perfect because you designed it and you may think it looks amazing, but they may not think it does. So listen to what they have to say. Um, we've had a lot of user feedback on our end, um, and it's some things that we're changing currently right now. But a couple of our older clients, they said they want the font to be bigger, so we're going to try to accommodate that. Um, and again, I can understand that because if they're older and they're staring at a smaller screen, they want to be able to read it better. So these, these are the kind of things that we don't want to hear, but at the same time, we need to hear. Um, and one thing that makes Vadro entirely unique versus developing your own app is when you go to update things on the app, they'll update rather fast. So if you have some images on your app that you want to change, usually within a few minutes, you know, those will update on the application side. So that's something that's uh, great, you know, and it, it makes everything easy to deal with. So if you have a holiday coming up, so we have Valentine's Day coming up. So we're going to probably change some things on the front of our app to get ready for Valentine's Day and, a and have a couple of other special product offerings. Um, we, we really like the fact that Badger allows us to change things quickly. We we did really well during like Halloween and Christmas by changing all that. There's a lot of special features that they have for that as well. Uh, this is uh, SMS marketing. You can go ahead and jump to the next slide. Um, this is something that I would like to talk with you guys a lot about, and I'm going to go ahead and make a referral. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that have their specific ways that they like to do SMS marketing, and I'm going to tell you two specific ways that I like to do it one of which uh, is something that you can go to the Shopify app store for free and download. They have free tiers and they have a paid for tier and recommending a SMS bump um, text messaging, you know, their application. Let's, if some of you guys would like to experiment with that and you would like to, for me to elaborate with that, you know, later on after, you know, the, we could carry it over into social or, into a group and we can talk back and forth about this, but they have what's called automations and workflows. So if you get somebody to subscribe to your text messaging VIP platform, not only will you be able to notify them in a moment's notice of what kind of flash sale you're having, but once they go ahead and opt in, because by all means, please do text messaging, right? Guys, don't, don't start text messaging people that you don't have their permission to because now this type of business, the, the text messaging type part of the business has gotten very uh, invasive where people are constantly bombarding people. And we want, we only want you text messaging people that, you know, are customers that have signed up. Um, gone are the days of just text messaging a thousand people and having a heyday with it. You don't want to do that anymore because you get in a lot of trouble. Um, what we like to do is we like to get them to opt in and then we send them the link for the, the app store and the Google Play store. And that works really well because, well, they're, guess what? They're already on their phone because <laughs> they received the text message. And so those types of automations are something that you definitely want to do. Um, and once you get them to download the app, uh, something that you can look forward to is if they ever do go to your website on the top of the app, it will pop up and ask them to open up the actual app. So the smart browser feature of, of Safari actually will indicate to them they can open up the app and then it'll jump directly over into the app instead of just keeping them on the actual mobile website. And that's something that I would highly recommend you to do. And there's also a feature that on those same Apple marketing channels that will allow you to put a code in the header where it, can, it will invite them to download your app at the top bar. So that's, that's another way of getting people, you know, to, to come in on that specific channel if they're looking at your website on a mobile device. 
So, well, I guess now it's question time. Uh, I still have, again, a lot of things to talk about. And if, you know, the Badger team wants to create like a group where we can, you know, once we're done with this, you know, we can carry it up kind of off group and talk about other techniques there. But I think they did a, an excellent job, you know, in preparation to this uh, presentation. I hope the insight that I gave you worked well, but if anybody has any specific questions, uh, by all means, you know, go ahead and, and I'd love to answer them. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's safe. There you go. Sometimes that's uh, all that helps, you know, somebody just speaking up and say, yeah, they'll be more than willing to help in a Facebook group. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. I appreciate that. Just um, all you got to do is just Google my name and you can find me everywhere. So I'm, I'm all over the place. Does anybody else have any? Uh, so as far as like creating the, uh, the app uh, with Badro, one thing that's really unique is, is, is your store already ready? This is the best way to, uh, to answer this question. Is your store online already, Susan? As far as uh, this, the answer to this particular question, Susan, if your store is already online and you go to the actual app store and you download Vadro, they will uh, reach out to you directly inside the app. And if you have any questions there in the lower right-hand corner, you can just click that live chat and they will, you know, usually within a matter of minutes, get back to you. Uh, their, you know, time to, to answer is pretty incredible. I think they have, it seems like they work all the time like I do. So I would definitely uh, go in there and talk to them. And once you get in there, you really kind of see based off of their theme development. And it depends on what your store looks like and what, you know, the type of themes they have in there. You can go in and start putting the images. And as you're working on the theme, it'll port all of your products over in there too. So it's a pretty painless process, probably one of the best I've ever seen when it comes to integrating with an e-commerce platform. Okay, well, that's great. And, and what, what I can say, Susan, as far as uh, this part right here in relation to if your store is up and you're making good money, I would highly recommend you. Are you using, uh, what type of community are you building around? Do you have a Facebook group or a Discord server? What are you using? Okay. Hey, Jenny, I see your question up there as well. I'll be more than happy to uh, get that information over to you via, you know, email or the team at Badger. I think what we need to do is they can add this onto one portion of their, um, you know, blog where they can go in and people can just click on it and go directly to it because it seems to be a, a recurring problem that we're seeing with any customer that we work with. They don't have uh, or even know that it even exists. <laughs> I think that's the most important part right there. So now what we did, Susan, as far as like mimicking the look and feel of the website, um, since we developed off the, uh, the uh, Empire theme, uh, we were able to make part of their uh, app look very similar to our site. Um, and that's kind of like how we, that's why we chose them. And the, as far as like, being able to deploy it. The only delays that we had uh, was when we started our uh, account with Apple. Um, as a developer, you have to be approved. But if you're working with an approved developer already with Apple and you deploy the uh, app, it doesn't take, but you know, you can probably go live in five to 10 days, to, you know, depending on if you have everything together. You know, like if you're good at planning and organizing and you've done it multiple times, five to 10 days if your website's up or already up and going. And the majority of that is waiting on Apple to just put it in the App Store. So if you go to developer.apple.com and you hit enter, you're gonna be met with um, kind of like a, a small menu of App Store badges, product images, photography and video, messaging and style and legal requirements. I highly recommend you to read the legal requirements because you don't want anyone like that size coming after you for doing something wrong um, because obviously they're allowing you to use their, your, their logos on your website. So you need to abide by their legal requirements. 
uh, by clicking on App Store Badges. Once you go to that link, you'll see all the different types of artwork that you can download. And they also have what's called a preferred badge and an alternative badge. And then, you know, there's all different types of, you know, standards. Everything's pretty much on developer.apple.com. So hopefully that'll, um, you know, help you solve that problem. Let me make the look and feel. Yeah, we've already done that one. Okay. So I've answered that one. Hang on just one second, guys. Let me catch up. <laughs> as far as the block shop beauty theme, I'd have to take a look at that one. I'm not uh, off the top of my head. I'm not remembering what that one looks like. Uh, they do have a, a good amount of themes that are in there. And based off of uh, the last one we did, we were able to, to change some things up on it that looked really, really nice. And Obviously, um, as you continue to build apps with them, you'll develop these little tricks that you learn as you're putting them together and it'll help it make it look more unique and more like your website. Uh, and they're always adding more features. So that's something that's the most important. But I think what you'll be very excited to know and depending on which application that you choose, there's uh, one that goes for like, there's a wide range of them. They go from, I think, $1.99 a month uh, up to an enterprise level, which you actually have to contact them to determine the pricing on that. But there is a specific uh, thing that if you sell a product where you believe going live uh, to kind of do like a live shopping feed, um, that product is called Blink. It's an integration that they have inside Badro to where you can go live and you as the presenter can show your customers what products you have for sale or clearance or what you have in inventory. Like if you have an abundance of inventory and you want to move it quickly. And when people get that notification, it tells them that you're going live very much like Facebook live. So um, again, that's another reason why you want people to download so they can see kind of in, in a live way of like what you're selling. And that's something that's really exciting. That's a very popular thing around the world that hasn't really been, common in America for some odd reason, but around the world, it's something that's really huge. Uh, the Chinese market does that a lot. Yeah. Yes, that's something that you definitely want to speak with um, the people at Vajra about. Um, that's something that uh, I believe that they are working on right there. And we actually, believe it or not, use multiple uh, devices to handle that right now. So it's a great question. Okay, so it looks to me like, Susan, you'd be a perfect um, candidate uh, for one of their apps, and I would highly suggest um, they do offer uh, kind of like a, it depends on which part of the year it is, but I think it's like, is it currently right now 60 days uh, free trial on getting them in and getting them going, uh, the system? Am I correct in stating that right now? Or has that time frame changed? Okay, great, great. All right. Um, and when you go through the app, is it a Facebook group or a page? So what we're talking about here, to be very clear, is we're talking about the use of a Facebook group or a page to promote your app. Um, Badro, their application will, that is built for you will show up in the Apple App Store or and the Google Play Store. So your app will actually be a real app for your company on the App Store. And your job is to make sure you have the proper ways for the customers to find that. That's why we're talking about all of these techniques. So I think um, by means of that, by me sharing uh, my experience with you and the team at Vajra, we can lead you down the right road on um, when or how an app would benefit your business. That would be the most important thing. Yeah, um, I would say, Susan, in regards to the, 
as far as like what you would want to choose. And that, that really has a lot to do with the experience and what you normally charge. I would say um, app development, if you have, I, I look at it two different ways. The, the team at Vadro, uh, they're a great resource. But they're um, they're going to be they're going to work well with someone like uh, me or you that does this type of work to where we can do it really fast. If you've never done any type of work like that before, it could be kind of tough and time consuming. You might be a little bit of intimidated because there might be a lot of steps. But if you're very well versed at working with Shopify and integrating, um, you know, apps and stuff like that, and in understanding, you know, how everything is just a little bit different. I would recommend uh, going ahead and doing it, Susan. That would be a great uh, move on your on your behalf. If you're already making money and you already see a vision of what you want to do, then I think you definitely um, would benefit from the app. So let's see here. Let me clear some of these up. Okay. Yeah, so you're you're definitely a candidate, Susan, without a doubt. I think uh, I'm, I'm glad, I'm always glad to meet people like yourself because if it's going to push your business to the next level, um, it's a very small investment uh, to, to be in that space with the bigger brands. Um, I know I said earlier, it is a lot of work, but it's the same thing as any other type of business. If you're not willing to work uh, in the beginning to do the hard things, then it's going to be tough for you to benefit in the end um, I work really hard and have, you know, for the last seven years to kind of get where I'm at, uh, just to be online and just to be able to make these types of presentations and reaching out to all these companies and being involved. Um, 90% of everything I've learned, uh, I attended college and then I quit in the, my last year and started my first business. So I really think it has a lot to do with uh, action taking. If you're an action taker and you get things done, you'll succeed. That's a great question, by the way. Yeah, I think you'll I think you'll really enjoy working with these people, Susan. Now, Jenny, did you have any other questions in regards to uh, the Facebook group or the page um, going through to the app, or did did I do a good job answering that? Yeah, I think that's a great idea right there. The actual making a quiz. So, good job on that. <laughs> so Jimmy, uh, there is a question uh, for you here. Uh, so when do you think we should start promoting the mobile app? So uh, should we start promoting it before the launch or uh, uh, is it necessary to uh, start promoting it before the launch with uh, you know, shout outs talking about? Uh, uh, I believe you're 100% accurate in that statement. Uh, promoting before launch is something that I would do to build up the hype. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, with a lot of our customers, we do that. In our case, we didn't do that. <laughs> so I can't say for the shoemaker in this part that uh, that we did it, but I would definitely, because um, I think that much like everything else in life, people are excited when people move forward in business. Like when they're going to the next step, people are happy to hear that. I feel like a lot of times they expect that from us. <laughs> So we, we tend to move fast on everything we do. So they just kind of think we're, they already know we're going to do it. But in relation to a, a new and growing business, by telling people you're launching an app, um, you know, try not to pin yourself down sometimes because, you know, we all know that the elusive Apple wait time and the Google wait time, that being the, the most tedious of all of it, um, at least you guys have developed something that solves a lot of the hard problems. Um, as far as like getting past that part, sometimes they approve them and move them out fast and sometimes they don't. So <laughs> that's, that's one thing I like to tell everybody. Yeah. One thing, uh, maybe you can help me out here. I'm not sure if you see the question in Q and a, uh, when they go live on blink, is it able to go live on the Facebook page in the group yet? Uh, yeah, Jimmy, I think, uh, you can choose to go live either on the app, just the app or both the app and Facebook pages and groups. Okay. Yeah, that's something that we haven't integrated yet on our end, but um, I know we use another tool when we go live on YouTube and Facebook and, you know, the groups, it all links everything together. So I, 
I assumed that would work, but I wasn't 100% sure if that feature was ready yet. But now that we know, we definitely need to integrate that as well. So we've got a lot of uh, products in that we have. As a matter of fact, we got uh, 38 different products in from one of our other stores, and we're going to be doing a lot of that. So a lot of use of Blink, and we definitely probably need to do another webinar on that as well. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, one thing, um, I'm pretty sure you know this, but uh, we have this, we came up with this really cool feature called product drops. So where it's kind of like a live, but you can do it with posts. So we've seen people use it a lot. Uh, when we did a beta test on it, like uh, a lot of our folks loved it. And they were actually seeing, a, uh, they were actually seeing really good uh, uh, sales coming out of it as well. Right. So yeah, I had a feeling on the, uh, the marketing material with uh, Apple and Google, that was something that a lot of times we have a lot of people asking about. So um, I'm glad that person asked that question. We were able to focus on that. As far as at a banner on the homepage, talking about an upcoming live, that's a really good idea as well. And also on a banner on your website, letting them know that you have an app is, an, is another good idea as well. <laughs> That's something that those are things that should be kind of uh, mutual on both ends, you know, for the, the consumer to know about it. And I think a lot of times most designers have uh, just gotten to the point where they just stick it down in the footer. Well, a lot of times based off of heat maps and stuff that we watch, people don't ever typically make it to the footer. They usually find what they want in the top of the website or the top of it. So unless you've got a lot of experience looking at, you know, you know, heat maps and various tools that like what people are actually doing on the website, um, I'm not sure if I'm still sold on just sticking the link to the uh, app store and the Play Store down on the footer is the best thing for you. Anything else, anyone? This whole time I've been looking at the Q&A and now I finally see that you guys have been chatting with everybody on this side. <laughs> Good job. Thanks for watching that for me. Okay, well, thank you, Susan. We appreciate that. I'm just glad I got here. Um, we had some technical difficulties on my end and I come in at the last minute as usual, you know, so that's uh, seems to be my that what typically happens to me on everything I do. It's the last minute. You could set a world record for last minute deals. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, today's session was uh, really amazing. Uh, right from uh, how we saw about uh, how uh, it's important to promote uh, your application, just like how you promote your business, and uh, about the importance of building a community and um, about uh, app store optimization and all the other ways you can promote your mobile apps, say uh, emails, um, app only discounts, which are uh, again a great way, and uh, influencer shout outs, which are known to uh, be um, very uh, effective. And also um, ways like email marketing and uh, social media engagement. And I think you've covered a lot uh, today, Jimmy, because um, it was a very uh, solid and uh, very informative uh, session today. Uh, all the intricacies were uh, brilliant. So uh, uh, we hope uh, it was very informative for all the attendees as well. Uh, if you are new to our webinars, uh, we do monthly webinars and we are hoping to see you again next month. So okay. uh, have a wonderful day. Ahead. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. It's nice to meet everyone. And I'm sure I'll be speaking again soon. <laughs>